Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to the C++ series. In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about two keywords in C++, continue and break. In this one, we should just dive in with an example so that we can see how they work. Now, continue and break are going to be about affecting the control flow of loops. So I have a loop here, a for loop, doesn't matter if we use a while loop or do while loop, uh, it's going to work the exact same way here. So for this program, let me go ahead and save this code here. I'll go ahead, recompile it and rerun it, and we can see what's going on here. Again, it's a loop that's going to run 10 times while i is less than 10 and increment one time, printing out start of the loop here and then incrementing i each time along the way. So how can we affect the behavior of this loop depending on maybe some internal condition or something going on in the code? Well, what we can do first is experiment with the continue keyword. And what continue is going to do, as soon as we start executing this loop, whatever the innermost loop is, that is with the curly braces, we will start testing this condition again. In fact, we'll skip the rest of the code in this loop. So let's go ahead and save this code and try to rerun it and see what the result is. So this time when I run the code, I just see start of loop over and over and over again. Because again, I started this loop, print out start of the loop, and then when I continue, I just jump right back up here, testing our condition and incrementing i. Okay, so that's how continue works, but how does break work? So let's go ahead and try changing in break here. And break breaks the control flow, as it sounds like it would do here. So I'll go ahead and recompile, rerun, and we'll go ahead and see that start of the loop is printed out, and then break breaks us totally out of this loop. So we jump to the end of it wherever this right curly brace is. Okay, so I think you get the idea of continue and break. But let's go ahead and just add one more loop here just so we can see again how this works with a say nested loop here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create some other uh, outside loop here. This will be my outer loop with X and then an inner loop with I here. And let's go ahead and make sure that we indent our code nicely. And I'll make this just a little bit wider so everything fits on the screen there. Okay, so I haven't changed too much. This time I just want to print out what I is in my outer loop where X is in scope. That would be here between these uh, two curly braces. So let's just go ahead and compile, make sure that we're still running. And indeed we are. So this inner loop is going to print out 10 times for every iteration of X. Okay, not too bad. But let's say we want to just break the execution here. So in other words, this will never happen on any of the iterations because as soon as we start executing, we will break out of this loop, hop down to line 10, and then just execute this portion of our code. So let's go ahead and see if that is true. I'll recompile rerun, and again, we'll just see that X is what is printed out here. Just this line here because we break out of this loop. Now we can do something similar here with the continue statement, and let's just go ahead and just type continue here, just to, again, break the control flow a little bit here. So in this case, go ahead and pause the video and think about what's gonna happen. And if you took a moment to pause the video before I uh, recompile this and run it, well, what's going to happen is as soon as I start executing this loop, I'm just going to continue and evaluate this condition, again, hopping back to the top of our loop here. So we shouldn't see anything. And in fact, we don't. We are continuing our execution or retesting to make sure that this case is true and incrementing our variable. So folks, that might be a review for some and for those of you who already know about continue and break, you can see how it might commonly be used to control control flow in C++. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this just adds some more tools to your C++ programming tool belt, and you'll consider liking and subscribing so that you can catch more great videos like this. All right, folks, we'll see you in the next one super, super soon. Take care.